During the closing weeks of the church year, we have scripture lessons that draw our attention to the hope we have as Christians, the day when God's will will be done on earth as in heaven, all wrongs righted, all wounds healed, all sorrow replaced by joy. The last number of years while serving as pastor for Hyattstown and Clarksburg United Methodist Churches in the Baltimore Washington Conference, we're located in northern Montgomery County, Maryland, I have been trying to lead the parish in a season of gratitude during these last weeks of the church year. That means from All Saints Sunday, the first Sunday of November, through the last Sunday before Advent, we work on our discipline of gratitude. In this work, we begin with a focus on all the saints who from their labors rest, and we conclude with a Thanksgiving Day service on that last Sunday before Advent. In between, we have readings that focus in one way or another on Christ the King. That's where we are today. I'll have two sets of videos for you today. The first, this one, is the set of readings that we would have had last week had our focus not been on All Saints. And the second is the set that was scheduled for today. Next Sunday also I'll have two sets of readings for you, two videos. First being For Christ the King Sunday, and the second for Thanksgiving Day. As always, I offer the scriptures to you in paraphrases. In this way we can respect the copyrights of contemporary translations. For the Psalms, I use the paraphrases, the lyrical paraphrases of the 1912 Psalter, allowing us to sing the Psalms. And for the rest of the scriptures, I do my own paraphrase work. As we begin, before we hear the word, let's pray. Will you join me in praying? Open us, Holy One, to your word and your way. Clear our minds of daily distractions. Fill our hearts with the humility we need to hear and receive the message you intend for us today. Amen. For our first reading in this video, we have a selection from the book called Job. It's a, um, an, a literary attempt to try to deal with the problem of evil. Why bad things happen to good people. How do we respond when bad things happen to good people? In chapter 19, the central character, Job, makes a speech. He says, bring pen and paper, call in a scribe at once. Better still, call in an engraver to carve stone. I want my words to last through the ages. This I know. The Lord God lives and will outlast all of time. Of this I'm certain. And when my skin and bones are gone to dust, my flesh will be restored that I may see God. The Lord God is on my side. I will witness this for myself. There will be no need for any other. Such knowledge is too much for me. My legs buckle beneath me. An affirmation of faith after all he's been through. In response to this reading, we have words from Psalm 17, as I said, from the 1912 Psalter. Lord, hear the right, attend my cry.
we're offered the option of reading from the prophets also. This reading is from the prophet Haggai. And to offer some extended historical context, King Darius of Persia was the king who invaded Greece and whose forces were defeated at the Battle of Marathon, a battle from which the bravery of the Athenians is remembered as they held back the Persians. The successor of Darius was Xerxes, who would also face the Greeks, this time at Thermopylae, where the Spartans held them back for three days. These events took place prior to 500 BC. And at the time, the exiles of Israel had not yet returned from Babylon. And to the people still in the land of Israel, the prophet speaks. During the year 548 BC, the Lord sent Haggai with a message for the governor of Judah and for the high priest. They were Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, son of Jehozadak. It was a message for those people of Israel who had not gone into exile but struggled to survive right there in their homeland. Do any of you remember how Jerusalem looked before? Do you recall the beauty of the temple? How terrible things look now, right? But take heart. Everyone should be encouraged. Work, says the Lord, for I am with you as I promised in the days of Moses. My spirit still moves among you, so do not be afraid. Watch for it. I'm about to do something amazing. All creation will be shaken. The nations will be disrupted, and you will profit from this. Silver, gold, they belong to me and I will give these riches to you. The old days will pale in comparison, says the Lord of hosts. Prosperous days are on the horizon, promises the Lord of hosts. The response to this reading is from Psalm 145, again, from the words of the Psalter.
The reading from the New Testament letters is from Paul's correspondence with his friends at Thessaloniki. This is the second letter, and we're, we're in chapter 2. He writes, You've heard all those preachers spouting nonsense about end times and the appearing of the Lord Jesus. Don't listen to them. Don't let their vain imaginations trouble you. Don't be deceived. Here's the real scoop. Before the day of the Lord, there will be a day of rebellion. In the rebellion, the one of lawlessness will be revealed. Surely he will be destroyed. You see, he's so full of himself that not only does he think himself better than everyone else, he thinks he can take the place of God. Do you remember? I told you all this before. For now he is shrouded and hobbled, but his day will come. We see lawlessness at work even today. But what about when the restraints are removed? Then the embodiment of lawlessness will be revealed, only to be swept away by the breath of God, destroyed by the Lord Jesus at his return. Satan is a deceiver, a con artist, a skilled illusionist, and is even now leading many astray. Those who have no love of the truth will stumble into his deceptive traps. They could have been saved, you know, but rejecting God, God will permit them to have their own way so that they will cling to lies. It will all be so worthy of condemnation. But for you, we give thanks. You have believed the truth and have been made holy by God's Spirit. You are some of those whom God has chosen, summoning you into the glory of Christ through your acceptance of the gospel. So having made a good start, stay strong. Hold to those traditions we conveyed to you, whether you heard them or read them from us. The author of all comfort and hope, who has loved us, will continue to strengthen your spirits so that kingdom deeds and gospel words will be overflowing. This is our prayer for you. Turning to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20. Theological debates are nothing new, and trying to make your opponent look stupid, an equally old tactic. Some Jewish teachers, theologians, could not accept the idea of the resurrection, and so they offered a riddle to Jesus in order to demonstrate the validity of their position. They said, Under the covenant God gave through Moses, we have an arrangement to care for childless widows. The brother of the man who died should take the widow as his own wife. Suppose this should happen not just once or even twice, but seven times. If there's a resurrection, whose wife would she be? Each of them had married her. Jesus told them they were starting from a faulty premise. He said that marriage is an arrangement that God has given us for time, but for eternity, it's not even a consideration. Marriage is not an institution for those whom God grants resurrection from the dead. Rather, being like angels, being children of God, being born new in resurrection, they cannot die. Now that there is a resurrection, Jesus proves, is from the text, you claim to know and love. When Moses speaks with God at the bush, at the mountain of God, what does Moses say? He calls God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is not God of the dead. God is God of the living. To God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are a lie. So then, there must be a resurrection. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Again, I would invite you to pray with me. God of the earthquake and the silence. Quiet in us any voice but your own, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we might hear 
and in hearing we might believe, and in believing we might act, making way for your new creation. Amen. Remember, there is another video today, another set of scriptures. But, for now, a benediction. May the God of our salvation, our strength, and our comfort guard your hearts and minds this day and forevermore. We all say amen. Thank you.